Hi, our buddies, and welcome into Bricolage with Paint Girly. I had a crazy idea, but I think I think it will work, and I think it will be useful, at least for me. Maybe you will find it useful, too. Let's see. I have what we call painty papers or gel print papers that I wanted to use, and uh, I was just digging through my stuff and found some bias tape, and I was trying to think of ways that I could use some simple origami in my journaling and in my projects. And I have a really cool uh, Zen doodling origami book. But, you know, I'm just having a hard time figuring out some of those folds. So I went to something easy. And this is just the little pockets. These are little origami pockets. Now, this paper is just um, copy paper that you'd put in your printer. And I had wrinkled it up, dampened it, and put some color on it. And it made like a marble type paper. So it's all crinkly. So I went ahead and did the simple origami fold that makes these little pockets. And I thought they would be really cute to store little bits. So here, see, I put my stickers. This is where my chicken stickers are. So I can just pull out my little tab, my little envelope kind of point. My chicken stickers are in there and I can tuck this in. I could have Velcroed. I could have put a chicken sticker here on the back side. I tried poking a hole, but I just didn't like how that looked. And then I used my bias tape to stitch them together. Added a little extra bias tape around here. See, and this is something small I can keep on my desk or near my desk. You'll probably keep a lot of different things in here, but I think I'm gonna use it for my smaller stickers. So then I thought, well, let me do them with my gel print papers. You know, when you gel print, and if you don't know what gel printing is, I encourage you to Google that because it's really interesting. It's really fun to do. And sometimes when you make your gel prints, they don't look so great. But then when you go back and look at them, say, a month later, they look a lot better. So I thought these would make some cool pockets. Now, keep in mind that you can also glue these pockets down into a journal. Of course, I was going to grab a journal and I didn't. Uh, let's see, I've got quite a mess sitting here to the left of me. But I'm not seeing a journal. Let's see. This one I think I could probably, since not finished. Especially if you're doing, say, an Asian theme, I think they look like little takeout boxes from the Chinese restaurant. And see, so you could pop little, little goodies in here. glue that right on the page. You could glue it this way, have it slide in and out this way. Of course, there's a pocket there, pocket there, pocket here. But let's not digress. I gotta finish up that journal. So I pulled out some of my gel print papers. I was thinking if you had double-sided origami paper, that would work too. Let me just pull out one of these. I'll show you real quick. Let's get something. Some of these are kind of dull. Let's pull out something brighter. You just need a piece of paper and you need it to be square. It can be any size. Of course, the bigger the pocket you want, the bigger the sheet of paper you want. So this is just um, a six by six. And all you do is just let's do this way. Go point to point. I'm going to use my phone folder, which is just this little plastic tool that helps to crease your crease your folds. 
and then you bring one side over to the outside edge then the other side fold that in it gives you a nice little bottom and then you've got your double sheet here you just fold this down and then you tuck it in one of the pockets now i like pulling my pocket from underneath and tucking it in i think it it fits better and then you just press that in there you might need a little zhuzh and there's your little pocket how cute is that see and with the double-sided paper that would even look cuter in a journal you could put a button you could velcro that down little piece of ribbon so that's what i'm doing today now i've got several of these already pre-folded so we didn't waste a whole lot of time folding i think for this one i'm doing eight so i've got five i've got three more here to do so if you're cutting your paper yourself say you printed gel print papers or you could stamp paper or However you might like to design paper you're using, say you're using your own paper and it's not pre-cut. Sometimes it's hard to get it cut exactly square. So when you fold the triangle, if you have any extra, I just trim that off. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to bring over my left side. I don't know if you can note if you're noticing, but this paper I've put some glitter on my jelly plate. So this has got some sparkle. I love sparkle. I'm pulling that down. And I'm gonna tuck that in. And add it to my stack. When I was pulling out my painting papers or my gel printed papers, I thought to myself, gosh, I don't remember these looking this, this good. So I'm a lot more pleased with these several weeks down the road. Now, I have bias tape that I have in my stash or my craft supplies. I'm not a sewer, so I really don't know what bias tape is for. I know I like it. And if I see it, uh, like at a uh, Goodwill, I always buy it for a couple of reasons. I like to have it handy because I use it in other projects, especially if it's like a cream color. Now this one's I'm going to trim. See how when I cut my paper, it's not exactly square. So I'm going to trim this one. Right on this side as well. But I also like the packaging that, that's included with the bias tape. I'll take that and I will use that to make a pocket in a journal. I've done that before. I just made a journal for the Curl Boss. And I made a pocket like that in her journal, and they come out really cute. And if you're doing a sewing theme journal, junk journal, it's really cool. All right, so this is my last one. Tuck this in.
All right, so now I've got them all. I try to get them all about the same size. They do pretty well. Some of them I was measuring where I put my first fold into, but I did okay there. Not too shabby. So now this, I was kind of saving this bias tape. Now, if you're new to this kind of arting or sewing, and you're like, yeah, what is bias tape? It's apparently this little fabric that you can use for um, finishing edges. You can use it for decor decoration. See now, if I glue this and glue the bottom, put that on a journal page, that makes a real cute pocket. Don't throw anything out. So bias tape is fabric that is folded in half, and then each side is folded in. Now, this was a cream-colored bias tape. This is what I usually do with it. I'll coffee stain it, and then I iron it, and I use it for ties or for tabs on the edges of my pages or for building clusters. You can do a lot of different things with it. Now, this is a decorative one. I don't see too many decorative like this, so that's why I was attracted to this one. Now, on the white, I had the red. And I thought that would go good with the little papers that I was using. I didn't really have anything much for this conglomeration of pages. But I don't think this will look too bad. So what I do is, or what I did was, is I take my bias tape. And I'm just going to sit my first page. On the right edge and then my second page I'm going to sit on the left edge and then I'm going to stitch that on my sewing machine now if you have some fabric tack you could glue that on I am sure if you wanted to hand stitch it I think you could do that you don't need to have a sewing machine um, but you could certainly do that but what I want to think about is when I made this one, I didn't put my pages all the same way. See, I was thinking I wanted them all to be facing this way. What I didn't think about was the left-hand side. See, I want them, I think, facing where I can tuck things in this way. See, this one I got on upside down. So I think this is correct. Now, you can put them together how you would like them. This is just how my brain works. So I'm going to stitch that on and stitch this one on. I think I have red in my sewing machine. I didn't change out my sewing machine. I don't know that I want to do that and take up your time with that. See, then I'm going to come down this way, and that won't be stitched on there. Why don't I use my glue? And then I just have to stitch my pages together and I can show you that. So this is Fabri-Tac. It's called Magnetac Fabri-Tac. They're all made by Beacon. I think there's three different kind of versions. And this is a permanent adhesive. This works very well with fabric. It bonds fabrics, lace, glass, leather, wood, and trim. It's very thick and boogery, if I can say that. And I just love it. I use it quite a bit. And it sticks pretty quickly. But in my craft space, a lot of times it's chilly in here. And so I have a hard time once I start running low to get the fabric tack to come down to the nozzle. However, if I leave it sitting this way, so it's ready to go. It then it then leaks out of this little cap, and then I have a different issue. 
So it's just, oh, here it comes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think I might have a little bit of a clog. Of course, I don't have much grip either, so that's the other part of the problem. I lost the lid to one of my fabric tacks and I put um, plastic wrap all around it. It's been sitting for months over on my windowsill. And I just remembered it was there. So I thought, well, let me see what I have to do to make it thinner, you know, to thin it out. And it, uh, the directions online were to add some acetone nail polish remover. But this was too far gone. It was almost a, it was almost a solid brick of glue. Not good. Okay, so the reason I'm doing this is so that I can hinge my little book. Now, I wasn't really paying attention as far as um, laying out a design either. Now, I want to leave a little bit so that I can cut and then stack my pages and then sew them together. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer it for you. And really, this is a relatively, if you have all the, if you have all the components, this is a relatively quick project. And it's a fun, fun way to use up maybe some of your papers you have laying around. You know, you don't want to throw them out. We make things and we want to use them, right? So now I'll grab two more. Let's see what I have left. These are kind of odd. These kind of work. Oops. Okay, so let's move these up. And I still have plenty of this bias tape left for another project. Now you don't have to put a closure on, but I kind of like being able to tie my little storage books. I have one made out of envelopes that I store my um, small stencils that I use on a fairly regular basis. So I like to store those. This one looks so folded a little bigger than the others. I'll do this one. Look how cute that turned out. See, when I did it, I didn't like it. This one's got glitter on it too. This is good because then I'll see how this holds up with gluing this together. But so far, when I use the Fabri-Tac, it works really well for me. Now, I am an affiliate with Amazon, so I probably am going to pop a link in for that Fabri-Tac in case anybody's interested. 
Let's do these last two. I mean, this is small enough. I could even, of course, I, I carry a huge handbag. Because then if I want to take some color pencils or a coloring book or a sketchbook, I've got plenty of room to do that. It's kind of like a tote. I could even put coupons in this, right? All right, so we're putting our last page on. I hope this works the way I think it will. It'll be embarrassing if it doesn't. Okay. Now, I did try to line these up as best I could from each other. All right, so now I'm going to cut my bias tape. Should cap up my glue. I'm try to always get in the habit of capping up your glue right away. Okay. Kind of looks like a kite tail, right? So I've got one set of pages, two. So now I just want to stack these. I might want to think about what I want for my cover. And I'm trying to get the fold of the bias tape to line up because that's where I'm going to stitch. I think you could hand stitch this very easily. And I'm just going to take a little straight pin. Kind of hold them together for a second. I think I like that better. Now to be a little more secure if I wanted to, I could always glue underneath there to hold that down, but I don't think I'm gonna have to do that. Now what I'm trying to decide is, see these will be folded in so that nothing falls out of my pockets. Am I going to want to tie it shut? Now this is just another end of, of fabric that I have sitting here and my little bits. That should be enough. So when I stitch it on, I'm going to stitch it the same time that I stitch my pages. Does that make sense? All right, so my machine is right behind me. It's all ready to go. I do have red thread, but I'm not going to worry about that so much. And I'm going to hold my little tie right there. And I'm just going to stitch right down the center. It won't take me, well, I'm saying it won't take me about a second, but I see that my bottom spread has disappeared. The things you don't think to check before you turn on your camera. I'm just going to pull that thread on my bobbin a little bit. Yeah. All right, 
let's try that again. Don't need those in my way. So now, uh, with this first one that I made, I trimmed off my bias tape so they're all even. And I think I want to do that again, but I don't want to cut my strings to tie it shut. So let's just see if I can. These are fabric scissors, but they're really not the sharpest. Because I probably have abused them. The tip isn't sharp. I kind of wanted to go down and ang you know, angle it down. Now you can see where some of my pockets are different sizes. So these pages are a little different. I think you could probably also do a pamphlet stitch here. If you didn't have a sewing machine. Okay. Now I'm going to go and fold my little closures in. This is like the top of an envelope. I mean, a kid could make these, right? Now, I've got to think about what do I want to store in there? I have a little tiny box of stickers that are a little nicer than most of my stickers, but I don't know where I put them. That's sad. So let's just see what I have. I've got eight pockets. And here's some stickers.
Now, when I flip through my book, see if I do it this way, I can't tell what's in there. So I'm going to take a sample of a sticker. And put it on the front. That's really kind of big. Let's get a smaller one. Oh, this will be pretty. This I could put right on the right on the flap. But see, that'll be tucked in, won't it? Let's keep that in mind. Oh, that's pretty too. I guess I could use that bigger one. That one's getting kind of bent. That's a big sticker. So this I'm going to tuck in. So my stickers don't fall out. Now when I have a sticker like this, I have a hard time getting the backing off. take my exacto knife now you have to be careful because you don't want to stab yourself but I put my exacto knife in between those two layers and pull off that packing and try not to tear my sticker And then it really kind of just works as a decoration. We got a little over the edge. Let's just stick that down. What else do I have in that book? Let's see. Let's see what else I have. I we'll have some mushrooms. Let's see, where do I want those? Maybe in here. This could also be a place to store, say you do some die cuts. This would be a convenient die cut storage journal. Now I gotta remember, I'm gonna go this way. Where's my, I thought I kept a mushroom out. Come on. Out both. It's hard deciding what one you want to use. I think I might add a little bit of glue to hold these down. You could use washi tape though. So, okay, so I want to put my little mushroom sticker on here. Now, the other one I got pretty quickly. Sometimes it takes a little while to. There, I got it. Woohoo! Now this one I'm going to put right over the Let's burnish that down a little bit. These can go back in here. These 
guys aren't cooperating. Here we go. The thinner your paper, the more flexible it is for tucking in your envelopes, your little pockets. Scrapbook paper is durable, but it's kind of hard to be too bendy. So there's my little origami pocket storage books. And I can keep these on my shelf right next to where I work. There you have it. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for joining me. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I'd love to have you join in with us as we craft together. Until next time, don't forget to take time to be creative and enjoy the journey. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.